Hi everybody, um, my name is Tim Burns, I'm from the National Institute of Informatics and today I want to talk to you a bit about um, the kind of research that we're doing here at NII um, and this is about using Bose-Einstein condensates for quantum information and so if, uh, if you sort of think of uh, uh, quantum technologies such as um, uh, Bose-Einstein condensates it's, it's probably a little bit difficult to imagine so I'm going to put this into some context uh, with regard to um, current technologies and um, explain how these kinds of uh, new emerging technologies will fit in with the, the kind of technologies that we're already used to. So, um, so as we know, uh, we've made some remarkable progress in the last 200 years as uh, uh, there's been a whole array of uh, different inventions. So um, in the late sort of 18th century, we've, uh, we had the invention of the steam engine, which led to the Industrial Revolution. And since then, we've seen an amazing kind of array of uh, uh, progress and uh, improvement in the quality of life. Um, but if we think about where uh, all these um, inventions come from, it's actually not because uh, there's been sort of some new uh, physical principles or some uh, new discoveries that have been made. Uh, in terms of physics, uh, it's all actually based on uh, classical physics. So uh, classical physics, as you uh, as you know from high school, uh, is 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 basically um, the the kind of uh, laws that were invented by Isaac Newton. And um, what it basically tells you is it kind of predicts mathematically uh, how different objects uh, behave under various different forces. But um, I mean, all these technologies that I showed on the first slide are actually really based on, on classical physics. So, of course, all these things like the gears in your steam engines and in your cars, I mean, obviously these obey classical physics, but um, uh, of course, things like other, other things like circuits and uh, um, computers all really obey uh, classical physics. So, um, this, in, in, in terms of uh, innovation, there's been amazing progress. But for physics, um, it's actually kind of um, stuff that we uh, already know, it's just become more complicated in, in its nature. Um, but towards the beginning of the uh, 20th century, there was, a, um, there was a basically the remarkable discovery of quantum mechanics. And what this says is that um, this kind of picture that we have of, um, uh, say, uh, if, we, if we try and picture an atom, and if you um, imagine these uh, electrons that are going around the atom uh, as sort of little point, little tiny balls that are moving around, you really can't predict uh, all the properties of the atom. And um, uh, what, what people discovered was that we were thinking about these things really in the wrong way. Um, the way that we should be thinking about it is not really in terms of like little billiard balls and uh, Newton's sort of equations, but in terms of sort of more like a cloud of atoms. So it, 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 the, the theory basically said that, you know, it doesn't really make sense to actually think of um, uh, uh, little, little uh, you know, billiard ball-like objects. Uh, you really have to think of objects more like um, a kind of in, in terms of this uh, uh, fuzzy cloud that exists uh, within the atom. And this applies not only just for electrons, but also for basically all objects Actually, um, um, it, it's just that uh, for many objects, these waves are very small, and so it's very difficult to detect. So uh, even you and I, we, we have uh, a kind of a wave wave function inside of us, and everything in the room has. It's just that uh, it's all very difficult to detect. So this is basically the idea that uh, this guy Schrödinger thought up, and um, and this is really a kind of revolution in terms of thinking because it really means that uh, things don't have to be kind of black or white. Um, if things are kind of a wave, then they can be really something in between. And so the idea of uh, this field of quantum technology is to sort of try and take advantage of this um, uh, of this of these kind of laws of uh, quantum mechanics. So um, so all these things that we're kind of used to, things like computers and uh, you know, steam engines and so forth, uh, these are only using classical physics. So, you know, can we go beyond uh, classical physics and use quantum physics to, to create new technologies? So that's, that's the basic idea of um, this field. Um, and so some of the ideas that are um, going around are things like, of course, uh, things like quantum computers, where um, uh, the idea is um, you have uh, bits in your computer 
that are not just you know zero or one it can be both zero and one at the same time uh, and and the idea is to sort of take advantage of that into making things like new new algorithms um, other things are uh, ideas such as quantum key distribution where um, this is a sort of absolutely secure um, communication channel so that you can send messages without being uh, uh, intercepted by uh, sort of eavesdroppers. Um, other ideas are uh, quantum metrology, so these are making highly uh, sensitive uh, measurement devices um, and uh, there's also another emerging field called quantum simulation where you use quantum mechanics to actually sort of simulate other complicated systems. So you would, uh, you know, if there's some material that you don't understand, you sort of replicate it that in the laboratory, um, and you can uh, sort of control that to make uh, sort of new materials and so forth. Um, uh, and so the way people are going about trying to make uh, quantum computers and uh, quantum information devices are. Uh, uh, are basically really uh, quite varied at this stage. Um, uh, in my opinion, this kind of reflects the this early stage that this research is in. People don't really know what the best way is. So there are ideas using uh, sort of uh, optics, so this is basically using light, um, or using superconducting circuits, uh, ion traps, which are essentially small um, ions that are suspended uh, within sort of electric and magnetic fields, and other semiconductor systems. Um, and uh, uh, what my research in particular focuses on is this, um, uh, uh, basically none of those uh, uh, four examples that I showed you on the previous slide, but a kind of new state of matter that's uh, only been recently uh, uh, basically realized. This was, um, uh, and this is called Bose-Einstein condensates. Um, and Bose-Einstein condensates was uh, basically predicted by uh, two guys, of course, Bose and Einstein, and um, and they predicted this back in sort of uh, back uh, about uh, about 80 years ago, and this was only realized um, a couple of decades uh, prior to now. Um, and the interesting uh, thing about Bose-Einstein condensates is that. Um, normally, the the wave function of um, of of, uh, of matter is really something that you can only uh, see at a very microscopic level. But in Bose-Einstein condensates, you can uh, see uh, a kind of a really macroscopic wave function. So you you really see quantum mechanics not at this uh, very small level, but at a very sort of large level, uh, like you're sort of seeing here. Um, here, this is uh, liquid helium, where, um, just show that again, uh, liquid helium, which uh, is, is a kind of related effect to Bose-Einstein condensation, and you get uh, very uh, interesting effects that you d don't normally see, like, uh, the, uh, like this liquid can uh, flow out of the container um, almost against gravity, uh, and this is all because it it's, uh, has this very strong quantum mechanical nature. Um, this is the kind of device that we use to uh, uh, realize Bose-Einstein condensates, or one of them, um, and you have a kind of atomic chip uh, where we have a very complicated array of circuits uh, in order to sort of control the Bose-Einstein condensate, and the Bose-Einstein condensate lives uh, a couple of microns uh, above the surface of this atomic chip. Um, and what can you do with these kinds of things? Uh, there, there are kind of many ideas, but um, these are just some of them. And these are, for example, making things like quantum algorithms. Um, you can use these kinds of uh, uh, quantum circuits in order to do useful um, tasks, such as uh, look in a very large database and uh, find uh, the sort of uh, item that you're looking for uh, much more quickly than with uh, current computers. Or uh, another application would be to sort of um, uh, uh, break um, codes uh, that are currently used um, in order to encode uh, um, uh, secret messages. Um, and other uh, applications that we're thinking of are sort of novel sources of light. And so this is something like the laser, where uh, you have um, a, 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 a sort of a device that is creating um, um, some kind of coherent light, but uh, it creates light with um, properties that are that are different to standard light um, because of the unique sort of nature of these Bose-Einstein condensates. Um, 
Other applications include uh, also things like um, a kind of quantum network. And so in this case, you would have uh, these Bose-Einstein condensates sitting on each of these nodes, and these will be connected by uh, optical fiber. And uh, once you have these uh, connections, you can make uh, basically this whole system becomes a kind of quantum mechanical object. And so you can make things like the analog of um, quantum uh, the quantum internet, for example. Um, and so these are some of the ideas that we're thinking about at NII. Um, uh, it's, it's difficult to go through everything in much detail, but um, if you have uh, any more questions, then um, yeah, please feel free to uh, visit my homepage or um, uh, contact us directly. So thanks for your attention.